When studying history of any kind, you will inevitably come across myths and legends. Things that have been perpetuated over the years, even when they may not be true. In naval history, these most often take the form of sailor sea stories. The kind of story that gets passed around by old salts, reminiscing on their youth. Or by younger sailors, spreading around stories they heard while at sea. And if neither of those, you can also find stories that are told with the full knowledge they're false, but to get a kick out of them. These are generally harmless for the most part, but in the internet era, these old tall tales can take on a life of their own, without even touching on things like Great War U-Boat attacked by sea monsters. Add in the lack of vigorous research being done, and this can cause issues when studying naval history. You'll see sea stories spread around as absolute truth, and it can often obscure the real history of a ship. This video will look at a couple examples as a piggyback off my video on William D. Porter, both in the stories themselves and how you can avoid falling into their trap. Now, since I already brought it up, let's start with Willie D. As I covered in much greater detail in that video, there are a lot of myths about this ship. She was already embarrassing enough for the confirmed friendly fire incident shooting a torpedo at USS Iowa while President Roosevelt was aboard the ship. However, in the intervening years, her bad luck has been greatly exaggerated, as can be seen in the dozen or more articles calling her the unluckiest ship in history while repeating the exact same stories. These range from Iowa turned all her guns on Porter to a drunken sailor fired a shell into a base commander's lawn. What is common with all these stories, however, is a severe lack of evidence for most of them. Contemporary records, especially ship logs, make no mention of them. I suppose you could argue that Porter's crew wouldn't report the really silly stuff in their own logs, like the shell into an officer's yard. It doesn't explain why other ships, like Iowa, don't have the other stories in their logs. There's no mention of an accidental depth charge launch. Not a single peep about Porter tearing up the deck of another destroyer. Those are the kind of thing you would expect to see in logs, but they're notably absent. So, if there's no contemporary evidence, where do these stories come from? Well, the earliest I could track this down was an article from 1994 with no sources given. That article has, in turn been quoted up and down the internet for the last 30 years. It especially picked up in the mid-2010s. Everything about Willie D. Porter, beyond the single torpedo and her unfortunate sinking, comes from that one article, at least as far as I could find. That doesn't do much to make me believe in these stories, to be honest. A comment on the Porter video mentioned hearing them for 50 years, but even they said more weird bits keep getting added in. None of these stories seem to have any evidence backing them up. And this is also why Porter is a classic example of do your research instead of just parroting something you found online. No matter how many websites repeat the same story. You can even find the ship logs, although they are paywalled. There's a less extreme example from the same time period in USS Bory. This was an antique destroyer that is famous for going out in a blaze of glory. Her final battle saw the destroyer end up wedged on top of a German U-boat. This is all confirmed, as wild as it may sound, right down to Bory ending up in that position because a wave came under the ship at the worst possible time. The story gets more weird and changes in the telling in how the battle actually progressed. You have such things as shell casings being thrown at the German crew, as well as one enterprising sailor grabbing a knife and lobbing it at another German crewman. The most outlandish of them all is probably a flare gun being used to fire into the chest of a German sailor. While all of these could very well have happened, you could also argue that these are exaggerated, or that the situation was so chaotic that some of these were imagined. These incidents are cited by members of Bory's crew for what it's worth. 
that gives it a bit more weight than Willie D, simply because the origin of the stories can be traced back to the actual action itself. So, if you dig into the story, it has actual historical backing. That said, let's move on to the third story, this time from the Royal Navy. This is a story that has also seen a revival in the internet age. The story of HMS Rodney, a stoker, and an unfortunate Scottish sheep. As the story goes, Rodney was moored in Scapa Flow. One of her stokers had gone ashore at some point and ended up on one of the small islands around the anchorage. That man would eventually be discovered in an... compromising position with a sheep. The sailor would be court-martialed, where he swore up and down that he thought the sheep was a wren in a fur coat. That is, a female member of the Royal Navy. Understandably, no one bought that excuse for a moment. And from that moment on, even when sailing to engage Bismarck, Ronnie would be bawed at by the crew of other ships. This is your classic sea story, a funny little joke spread around by sailors, and picked up by other sources. Where this differs is that the story does have enough historical backing to be picked up in written reference material. That said, it was also a story that was only really picked up in the last few years. An old sea story that became a modern meme. What all three of these stories have in common in the end is that they're sea stories that have endured the test of time. Willie D's story is most likely exaggerated and tied back to an unsourced article. Bory's story has backing from actual crew accounts written down at the time, but the chaos of the action means that they may not be entirely accurate. And Rodney's unfortunate stoker is cited in written references. Citizen Sailors, a book about the Royal Navy, cites the story, as does HMS Rodney, Slayer of the Bismarck. These stories, as fun as they are, remain good examples of put in your effort on research, because you can find stories like these that are fun to talk about, but require that little bit of extra effort. They may be true, they may be false, but it's always worth double checking. You never know, you might find something more interesting in the process of research. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.